This character review is dedicated to our longest running patron, Denizu. Thank you. Hail to the king, baby! Welcome back everyone to another Smash Ultimate character review. I just can't seem to stay away from the heavyweights, can I? This time it's the goofy chubby frenemy penguin from the Kirby series, King DDD. Remember to watch my terminology video if you are unfamiliar with any of the terms I use. And without further ado, let's get right into it. The world was first introduced to the majesty that is King DDD in 1992 with Kirby's Dreamland, and has made an appearance in almost every single Kirby game since. In a game series like Kirby full of eldritch horrors as villains, King DDD comes off as a bit of a preschool cartoon special. In fact, calling him a villain at all would be sort of misplaced. Bowser at least makes an attempt to seem evil to the Mushroom Kingdom between his bouts of go-karting and Olympic sports, but DDD is just kind of a childish goofball, usually only causing trouble with Kirby through misunderstandings or pettiness. In fact, he was so obsessed with being better than his rival Kirby that he apparently trained himself how to inhale and fly like him too. Good thing too, because without those extra jumps, DDD would be pretty well screwed. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it folks, DDD has some of the worst movement stats in the game. We're talking a big body, super heavyweight with run speed barely faster than K rule, and air speed that is literally the worst in the entire game by a significant margin. And it's that air speed that really hampers DDD and forces him to play in a certain way. Unlike every other character that can usually float away or mix up with their landing to get back on stage, DDD has to mix up not where he's going to land, but when. You're DDD, you aren't moving very far away in the air, but you do have a top tier fall speed which means your opponent will not likely be able to react to whatever landing option you end up choosing. Combine this with DDD's extra jumps and you can basically do a coin flip up to four times of whether or not you'll land with something or just jump again. This leads to a phenomenon I will henceforth in this video refer to as the red light green light effect. Assuming you have all of your jumps, you can keep the opponent guessing when and how you'll come down. If they pull the trigger on the wrong jump, you just secured yourself a ticket back on the stage with a complimentary punish. The only problem with this is that it loses its effectiveness the less jumps you have to burn on it, and, well, you still aren't going to be moving very far. And so characters with good anti-air options can just ignore your little mind games and smack you, since they know where you'll end up eventually. The extra jumps do have other insulary benefits too, like letting DDD jump away after a flubbed aerial instead of continuing to fall, making it safer, turning around mid-air to choose between forward and back air, letting him keep up pressure with several aerials at a time, and giving him the most offstage presence of any Super Heavy in the game. Of course, this huge size and weight combined with horrible speed makes for a prime combo food candidate, and DDD might have the worst case of training room trouble I've ever seen in this game. Sometimes it's best to use DDD's jumps to stay far out of the way and avoid getting in the mix altogether. Luckily, if you do get hit, DDD is tied for the third heaviest in the game with DK, and his immense fall speed make him extremely hard to kill off the top. So while it seems he's getting his ass kicked a lot, you can take solace in the fact that it's an ass kicking he can probably handle. So we have a giant immobile floating punching bag who flops around in the air and hopes the opponent mistimes their landing. It's not looking good for DDD so far. Let's get into his attacks and see if things take a turn for the better. And we start off with the most basic of attacks, Jab. And to be honest, DDD's isn't very good. For starters, it's the slowest jab in the entire game at frame 10. That's slower than a lot of smash attacks. It's so slow, in fact, that enemies can punish you out of shield in between the hits. The best part about it is its rapid jab, which has good range, good potential damage, and a decent amount of kill power behind the finisher. You can also use jab 1 to jab lock and hit with anything faster than a down smash, but DDD's lack of speed makes this tricky to set up. It's niche at best, usually there is a move that performs its function better. Like forward tilt, which lets you use a lot of the good parts about rapid jab without suffering through jab 1 and 2 first. On its surface, F tilt doesn't seem all too special. It's kind of slow, the damage is mediocre even if all of the hits land, and it will rarely ever kill. And yet, I find myself using it constantly because of how good of a spacing tool it is. Forward tilt is one of the few attacks where DDD employs the maximum range of his giant hammer, and as such it covers a sizable horizontal area with its multiple hits for a long time. 
This makes it great as a cattle prod for keeping those pesky combo heavy characters who are invariably faster than you at arm's length, and does a great job covering ledge options as well. It's a workhorse of an attack. Not very flashy, but will keep you out of trouble and in the lead more than you realize. If you find yourself in the thick of it, don't worry. DDD has a few quick options to throw out, the first being down tilt. This goofy little roll is the fastest attack DDD has at a sprightly frame 6. This makes it fast enough to cover your ass after a whiffed attack, or even use as an out of shield punish sometimes. It's not great, but trust me, DDD doesn't have much else. Speaking of which, since DDD's dash attack is, well, what it is, uh, using down tilt out of a run can be a good substitute for a traditional dash attack or burst option to cover some area and hold on to whatever little forward momentum DDD can muster. The low angle it sends at means not only does it have some kill power at the ledge, where its long lasting hitbox can easily smack away recoveries, but it is also great for setting up tech chase situations, even into itself. Down tilt is likely one of DDD's best attacks, full stop. It's got speed, utility, and power, a rare trifecta even for the best of characters. Not to mention it's hilarious. And if we move over to up tilt, you'll find a lot of similarities. It's damn near as fast as down tilt and can be used up close pretty much the same way, but as of patch 8.0, this attack got its damage buffed and kills like a smash attack, provided you hit closer to DDD's head. Speaking of his head, it's intangible during the hitbox frames, making up tilt a decent anti-air option given its speed and the arc it covers from back to front. And while it won't usually lead to anything true, if you land that front hit at lower percents you should be able to string an aerial or catch an air dodge or something. It's way more effective an attack than most people realize, and usually how I end up taking stocks with DDD. But the reason you'll be so dependent on D3's tilts for quick attacks is because the rest of his ground moves are things like dash attack. This silly belly flop is the slowest dash attack in the entire game, taking almost half a second to come out. It's super laggy, super telegraphed, and super punishable. That being said, it's not useless. No, you can't use it like a traditional dash attack to chase opponents down and close gaps. You'll have to use down tilt for that. But if you get the read, its immense power will reward you. It should be treated like a smash attack that happens to move you forward. It's so slow that it will actually catch spot dodges and rolls pretty well, and its hitbox stays out so long that it's a great two-frame catcher. DDD has tools like Gordo to set up for his slower moves, so don't write dash attack off so quick. Its power gives it a niche, just not a very big one. And if we're talking massive power over all else, then we have to talk about DDD's forward smash one of the most devastating and infamous smash attacks in the game. It's big, covering an arc above DDD and leaving a sizable shockwave when he slams the hammer down. It's slow, taking almost three quarters of a second to slam the ground, being right next to Snake in the rankings of slowest forward smash in the game. But above all, it's powerful, dealing an eye-watering 25% base damage on the hammerhead sweet spot and KOing some characters in the single digits. This sheer force is able to make it relatively safe on shield, especially combined with that quake hitbox, and the quarter circle swing means it can cover the platform above DDD as well. Yes, it is slow, but this isn't the kind of attack you throw out haphazardly. It's the kind you set up for, and there are several ways to do that. You shouldn't ignore this move because of how it looks on paper. The huge power and fear it brings to a fight is well worth the downsides, provided you save it for the right occasion. Unfortunately, Up Smash fails to match F Smash's prowess in almost every way. It's much weaker, first off, not even being much stronger than Up Tilt, and it has the most pathetic sour spot I've ever seen on a Smash attack. Look at this crap. Yes, it's faster, but that isn't really much of an accomplishment, is it? It's still horribly slow and needs a decent read or something like a landing neutral air to hit what will ultimately net you mediocre damage. The only good thing I've found about this smash attack is that it covers both sides of DDD's body, which yeah can come in handy, but there are better ways to do that. Like say, for instance, down smash. Now this is more like it. After the constant high and low extremes of DDD's moveset, it's refreshing to see just a simple, relatively dependable down smash that does its job adequately. Sure the damage is a bit middling, but you've got usable startup, solid KO power with a brutal launch angle, and even an ability to hit both sides of DDD's body, look at that, wow! It does what a down smash should do. 
deal with rolls, cover tech chases, send off stage, kill, and destroy as many ledge options as possible, which is made all the more effective when you throw Gordos into the mix. In a game where most down smashes are lackluster, it's the best smash attack DDD has. This trend of, hey, not bad, continues with DDD's grab game. As far as frame data goes, it's par for the course for a heavyweight, one to two frames slower than the median. The same startup as Bowser, but less end lag. The range could be a lot worse too, and honestly have had no problems landing grabs as DDD, especially dash and pivot grabs. One really good way to get more grabs with DDD is through the use of tomahawks. If the opponent is comfy in their shield and not biting during your games of red light green light, just quickly fall next to them and grab them before they can react. This goes for any quick DDD ground attack, but grabs are especially effective at this. Once you do land a grab, you have four throws ranging from serviceable to very good. Four throw is your go-to for getting an opponent off stage. It does decent damage and sends at a good angle to set up for edge guards, which DDD excels at. Since it is so fast, an opponent holding out to escape down throw follow-ups could end up dying pretty early near the ledge, but otherwise it won't kill for a while. Back throw is a bit of an odd one. It sends at such a crazy high angle that it isn't very good at knocking out stocks or sending off stage but it does do the most damage of DDD's throws, so it's worth using when you're out of up or down throw combo ranges. Up throw is probably DDD's worst throw. It has some combo potential at the very beginning of stocks, but that very quickly decays and you're left with something that has neither the power nor utility of DDD's other throws. I see this throw being used less and less and I almost never use it. Now down throw is where it gets good. Slam the opponent down and bounce them up for a ton of follow-ups. The list of potential combos is extensive out of this throw, even leading into my favorite attack, Up Smash. So I will simply list the attacks and their combo windows on the screen. At lower percents, this throw is very reliable, but as the numbers climb, it becomes more and more DI dependent. Luckily, as I stated before, DDD's throws are all pretty quick, including forward throw. So if you're at the ledge, try doing a quick down throw and see if your opponent holds in. If they do, Feel free to snag an up air kill confirm around 100%. So that's D3's ground options covered, and uh, you could say it's a mixed bag. Let's take a look at his aerials and see if all those jumps have something behind them. Alright, we set off on the right track with neutral air. Bad stuff out of the way first, this move's hitbox is trash. Like, it's really bad. Like, you'll land right next to someone with it, and they won't get hit. That kinda sucks, since this is technically DDD's fastest out of shield option, but the lack of range means you'll just flop around and miss most of the time. Despite this, once you manage to hit the opponent with it by physically merging with them, you'll find quite a bit to like. The early hit is a strong hit, coming out quick, dealing a solid 12%, and even KOing in a pinch. But the majority of this attack is the softer late hit, and that's where things get interesting. Late hit Nair sends at a higher angle more suited for combos, and the list of attacks this thing leads into is pretty extensive. Here are some rough windows on the screen. Hitbox issues aside, this is one of the most useful tools in DDD's arsenal. It's a great landing option, it sets up for and ends combos, it's active for almost half a second, and it's pretty much the best thing DDD has for getting himself out of a jam for better or worse. Forward air, by comparison, is much simpler. A nice, straightforward hammer swing, nothing more, nothing less. Even though it looks like a crescent swing, the hitbox actually only covers a 45 degree angle in front of DDD, which can be annoying, and its frame data is pretty bad overall. Even still, it's a very useful attack for swatting away speedy lightweight pests and keeping up forward momentum. And after patch 8.0, it finally kills like it should. Its best use comes in conjunction with DDD's multiple jumps to batter the opponent with multiple swings or give them hell offstage. DDD has by far the best offstage presence of any super heavy in ultimate, and forward air remains a big part of that. But if all you're after is power, then just use back air instead. Back air is a bit slower to start than forward air and doesn't cover the same vertical space, but it is much safer and much, much more powerful. Confirm it from a landing nair to kill well below 100%, or swing it behind you to cover your landing. It's very safe when spaced on shield, and if the opponent challenges it, they might just get smacked in the face. 
It's one of the simplest attacks in the game and synergizes well with DDD's other aerials. Big Hammer hit really hard, and sometimes that's all you need to be effective. Up Air has a bit more about it to talk about. This twisty boy hits eight times for a total of 12% damage, and has by far the most range of any of DDD's aerials, beating out pretty much anything trying to fight down against it. This range means not only does it pressure platforms well, remember to use those jumps, but it can poke right through the stage in what I can assure you is a very annoying way to clear off the ledge. Kill power as of patch 8.0 is respectable, usually taking stocks in the low 100s depending on how high you are when you get the hit. The issue is it is very DI dependent. When DI'd correctly, the opponent almost goes straight sideways. What you can do to get around this is what's called a DI cross up. Let me explain. The best DI to survive DDD's up air is down and away from where he is facing. However, if DDD crosses over to the other side of the enemy during the attack, suddenly the best DI angle becomes the worst, and up air KOs vastly earlier. Use this to mix things up and ensure you take those stocks early. Feel free to experiment with some fun drag down stuff. Even if you can't get anything true off of it, it can still lead to some spicy mix-ups and some hilarious offstage shenanigans. Definitely one of DDD's better attacks, let alone aerials. Let's tie up DDD's aerial attacks in a neat little bow with down air, the big spike. This is your typical down air spike. It's big, it's strong, and it's super slow. You've got your standard spike sweet spot, and a couple of sour spots, both strong and weak. It's not really a good landing option or anything, but DDD's amazing recovery means you can afford to go really hard off stage to land this otherwise sluggish attack, and it will pay off when you do. Go ahead, style for the stream, you've earned it. And with that, we've gone over all of the A buttons. If you aren't impressed, I can't say I blame you, but stick around, the special moves are really where it comes together for DDD. First off, the neutral special, the big suck. With this move, you get a command grab and reflector all in one, all with its own complimentary win box to boot. The grab box is just fast enough to mix up DDD's landings or snatch opponent's shielding on platforms, and big enough that it will straight up win out against a fair number of attacks thrown at you. Just be careful as the win box can have the side effect of flinging enemies and their attacks into you and messing up your otherwise impeccable spacing. Also important to note that while the grab box obviously cannot be shielded, the wind box can. Once you inhale an enemy, you have a couple options. You could either waddle around and wait for them to mash out, or you could spit them out as a star. How long they remain in this star state depends on how fast they mash. If they are mashing hard, try using up tilt as soon as possible out of the spit to maybe get a confirm. Otherwise, try to get a read on where they'll end up and follow up accordingly. The spit enemy can also damage things along its path. How powerful it is depends on the weight of the character that you spit out, ranging from 10% for featherweights like Pichu to a massive 21% for Bowser. This has fun implications in doubles, but can also come in handy for matchups like Rosalina or Ice Climbers. What else can this special do? Of course, the venerable inhale gimp is always on the table, but you can spit out more than just other players. DDD can also use the inhale to regurgitate any projectiles in his path stronger than when they went in. Only problem is, unlike inhaling players, you don't get to choose if or when you spit out projectiles. As soon as one enters your gullet, you're spitting it back out in about 15 frames whether you like it or not. As such, I cannot recommend using this reflector, unquote, as liberally as something like Shine, but it can still come in handy in certain situations, especially since DDD isn't exactly a zone breaker. A note of caution though, while you can spit thrown items back out no problem, items on the ground will be swallowed instead, which can leave DDD vulnerable, or worse, explode in his stomach. And lastly, Neutral B can be used to swallow up your own Gordos. This will change whatever trajectory it had before into a fast and low rocket. It doesn't matter if it's one you tossed earlier, if it's hit back at you, or if you're sucking it back up after hitting the opponent with it. This is important since, as you will see soon, DDD quite literally lives and dies by the Gordo, so having one more way to manipulate them is all the more utility on your side. Quite the Swiss army knife this neutral be. 
but we've been talking about Gordo intermittently throughout this entire video, let's finally give it some proper spotlight. Gordo Toss is a two-part move. You've got the little spike balls themselves, and the hammer swing that DDD uses to launch them. If you manage to hit both at the same time, you're looking at some hefty damage. You can control the launch angle by holding the stick in different directions. Holding forward, for instance, will throw the Gordo lower, faster, and farther, like a more traditional projectile. While holding up will cause the Gordo to bounce high directly in front of DDD. I call this a shallow toss, and it's more suited for air denial and setups. These setups are what make Gordo truly terrifying. Since they bounce around for almost 3 seconds, you've got plenty of time to either combo from them or combo into them. The amount of ways this can be done is essentially endless and can often be improvised on the fly by the DDD player. Turns out Sephiroth isn't the only character that can combo their projectile into a smash attack. Due to some magical coding language, every 30th frame the Gordo is out, it has a chance to hit the enemy twice. leading to some truly ludicrous combo strings and damage. Fly high and toss one to cover your landing, throw one off stage to snipe recoveries, cover one area of the stage with it while you cover another, stick it to the side of the stage and create a danger zone, cover your recovery back to stage with it. The versatility of Gordo is only limited by the user's imagination. Well, and a few other things. The first and lesser of the issues is that you can only have one Gordo out at a time. You can try to throw another, but you'll just get the hammer swing, which isn't a very powerful attack on its own. The second and more infamous problems with Gordo is that if it gets hit with anything doing 2% or more damage, it's coming right back at you. I cannot stress enough how much of a hassle this is to deal with. Almost all other projectiles need to be reflected to get sent back at the user, not Gordo. Anything stronger than a multi-hit is going to cause you trouble including other projectiles, meaning DDD is going to lose the counter zoning game pretty hard. There is some counterplay to this unfortunate circumstance. You could either inhale the Gordo and spit it back as mentioned before, or you can press side B at the right time to catch the Gordo and throw it back. Both of these methods work well enough, but that doesn't stop it from getting hit back at you again. But if you're lucky enough to smack whatever's in the way with the hammer swing first, your Gordo should have a clean path to target. Depending on the situation, Gordo can either be a magic key that unlocks countless doors to option coverage and intricate combos, or it can be a nuisance that hurts you more than it helps, often making you shield in fear right after throwing it. And yet, if you play DDD, you'll put up with it, because honestly, it's well worth the drawbacks, and would be pretty busted without them. Okay, whew, let's move on to something a bit simpler, like Jet Hammer. This goofy-ass move lets DDD either quickly blast his hammer across someone's face, or charge it up for even more power. Well, I say quickly, but even the fastest version of this attack takes almost half a second due to the charge startup. Power obviously varies depending on charge, from around 12% all the way to a massive 40% that instantly breaks shields. The advantage this attack has over something like Forward Smash is that you can walk around and jump while the hammer is out, which believe me, will instill the fear of God into your opponent. The God in this case is of course DDD. Besides existential dread, this attack also has heavy armor right on release of the swing, which leads to some hilarious results. This attack is obviously for the casual side of things, it isn't very practical, but practicality doesn't always get the message across. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> Last special to be covered is Up B. The Super DDD Jump. Creative name. As an attack, Up B is pretty hit and miss, as in most of the time, you'll miss. But if you hit it, oh boy. Once DDD starts falling, he starts spiking everything in his way. And yes, taking stocks with this is as satisfying and hysterical as you would think. While he is falling, you can either cancel the fall into a little flip, or you can see it to the end and crash on the ground like a meteor. Any enemy caught underneath will be quickly buried and launched back out with huge power, taking stocks extremely early. When you land, stars will fly out from either side of you, making this attack much safer than one would assume, and poking through shields, if the slam doesn't break them outright. The berry on the slam is actually one of the strongest in the game, and a neat little trick you can do is cancel the fall as soon as you land on top of somebody, but before you hit the ground they're buried in. Congrats, you just put Inkling Roller to shame. Have fun. 
These little gimmicks are cool and all, but what is it like as a recovery move? Put simply, amazing. Not only does it let you ascend from even the murkiest of depths, but it has super armor on the way up. You can get battered off stage over and over, but try as they might, the opponent is going to have a hell of a time keeping you off that ledge. Now, don't get too crazy, you aren't invincible off stage or anything. You're still a big fat target, and if you don't count your jumps, it is possible to get gimped with enough relentless offstage pressure. Uppy's travel path is predictable, and its armor won't protect you from getting two framed when you grab ledge. If you're worried about getting two framed, simply hold down to crest over the ledge instead of grabbing it. This will let you keep most of your armor and slam into whatever unsuspecting creature happens to be sitting underneath you. It's one of the best ways to hit an otherwise ridiculous attack, but it should still be reserved only as a mix-up. Surprise, motherfucker! Yeah. DDD has the best recovery of any Super Heavy and one of the best recoveries in this game, period. You have several jumps, a huge armored upbeat, and an air dodge to ensure your trip back to stage. Just remember to cancel the upbeat if you're coming down to recover or it won't grab ledge. All this recovery means you live a long time, and can go much deeper off stage and for much longer than any character of similar size or speed. These are DDD's two biggest strengths in my opinion, and need to be exploited to their fullest by any aspiring expert of the character. Alright, you guys ready for the final roundup? Let's give this big ass bird his grades, which I'm sure everyone in the comments and the D3 Discord will agree with me on. We start our grades with speed, and DDD will be receiving our very first 0 out of 5. The only thing fast about DDD is how quickly he sinks in the air. His movement stats range from bad to the absolute worst. His frame data is pretty bad across the board and contains some of the slowest attacks of their categories. Whatever DDD is doing, he will not be doing it fast. Luckily, next is offense, which DDD fares much better with at a 3 out of 5. DDD's strength is nothing if not consistent. Sure you have a handful of power moves that can take stocks well below 100%, but those are very difficult to land without extensive setup. More often than not, you'll be racking up early damage with throw combos and Gordo setups, and taking stocks around the low 100s with an edge guard or a stray aerial. And that is perfectly serviceable. I've never been left wanting more power from DDD, but I'm rarely overwhelmed by it either. And it gets even better with defense because I'm going to give DDD a generous 4 out of 5. Yes, your out of shield game is virtually non-existent. Yes, your combo food. And yes, landing can have you holding your breath. But DDD is like a cockroach. You can smack him around all you want, but he will come flying right on back. All of that weight, all of that recovery, and all of those Gordos mean you will win the War of Attrition more often than not. And trying to take a DDD stock can feel like moving a sofa up a flight of stairs. DDD will inhabit the earth far after we all expire. Unfortunately, doing alright in two areas while completely foregoing the third does not make for a well-rounded character, and DDD is getting a 1 out of 5 in versatility. Don't at me. Your moveset is so mismatched you're forced to use tilts as a substitute for dash attack, your own projectile gets tossed back at you by a slight breeze, and your complete lack of speed means some matchups are going to be close to unwinnable. And yet, somehow DDD can take this jumbled potluck of attacks and terrible movement stats and make something resembling a game plan. Full disclosure, you're either going to love the slow burn of this character's playstyle, or it will be the most frustrating thing you've ever experienced in this game. The format of these videos dictate that I break down each aspect piece by piece, and I know I have been painting poor DDD in a pretty negative light, but I promise you when I say this, Thick Penguin performs much better than the sum of his parts. Give it a try. It could be fun. Thanks for watching, guys. I know this one took forever to come out, but I've been working full time, tournaments have been shut down for almost all of 2020, and I'm now on my last semester of law school, so I've been putting YouTube stuff on the back burner for the most part. Feel free to leave a comment on how good you think DDD is. Was I too harsh? Should I have been more critical? Let me know and tell me who you'd like to see covered. See you guys when I see you.